Steelers minicamp has come and gone, and there are seven names that I walk away from thinking, man, they could make an impact this year. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Today, we're talking about the seven guys who impressed at Steelers minicamp. We are officially on our way to Latrobe. This is the longest month of the year, hands down. I get it. It's summer, vacations. It's an exciting time for everybody but for those waiting for football, this is the longest four weeks that we have to deal with. We got a little bit of a tease, a little, hey, this is who looks good. This is who doesn't look good. This is what we have to worry about. This is what we have to be excited about. But we have four weeks before we get to see anybody again. And I won't lie to you, those four weeks, man, they're as long as it gets. They are as dragging as it gets. But I have some good news. The Steelers look to be on the up and up. In the words of Mike Tomlin, everybody should look good in minicamp. But I got to tell you, I think some guys look better than others. And just a quote from George Pickens here. This should make you feel good about the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2023. The vibe of the people is super, super cool. Super, super ready to go. And they're super, super energized too. That's how he summed up minicamp to me. And I got to say, I agree with him. So who are the seven guys? Let's start with Calvin Austin. He's been making noise ever since last season. The hype has been real. He missed his rookie season because of an injury, an untimely injury, and now everybody is waiting for this year, anticipating a lot, but worried that the injury is going to hold him back, I guess. It hasn't. So far, he's burned Patrick Peterson. Everybody and anybody has talked about how wildly impressive this guy has been. And then Najee Harris said that he could be used pretty much everywhere and he's going to put defenses on their heels. I think that he's a guy that comes in here and very much so impresses people at training camp, much like he did last year. The speed hasn't gone anywhere. If anything, it's gotten faster. I can tell you this, Calvin Austin, and I've talked about Calvin Austin so many times this offseason that I think I have to stop after this. But Calvin is a guy that put in so much work in the offseason that I couldn't see him being anything but successful. I couldn't see his sophomore season turning into anything but a great year. I don't know how the Steelers are going to utilize him once everything's said and done, but I'll tell you this. I expect him to be on the field a lot. I expect him to be used quite a bit, and I expect him to make a lot of plays. He is, as Najee Harris calls him, a unicorn, and there hasn't been a moment where he hasn't impressed on the field during OTAs and minicamp, and he certainly leads off the list of seven. Number two is Alfonso Graham, undrafted rookie out of Morgan State, uh, another running back that looks to be the next Jalen Warren. The Steelers are very much so impressed. Eddie Faulkner, the running backs coach, said, if we continue to build on what he's already developed and the details and those things, quote-unquote, you might have something there. Alfonso Graham has been impressive. He's been electric. You could tell that he's a little guy that moves quickly, The Steelers love those guys, and they could utilize them in a number of areas. For that running back three, I think Anthony McFarland still holds the upper hand, but I think Alfonso Graham could come in here and show, hey, man, I could catch passes too. I could do anything that you need me to do. I have kick and punt return ability as well. Maybe I should be the running back three. I want Anthony McFarland to succeed in the NFL. I think he's a great person. I think that he's very good at football. He just has to be in the right system and used in the right way. But I'm always for an underdog story. I am always for an undrafted rookie, especially one out of an HBCU who didn't get a bunch of attention coming into the NFL to come in here and show out and earn a roster spot. And I think right now, Alfonso Graham might be it if he does not call out Minka Fitzpatrick. And we all saw what happened when he did. He got laid out by the all pro. But I got to say, even that to have the balls to say, hey, I want you and even to take that licking, stand up and say, whatever, I'm going to keep trucking. I don't know, earned a little bit of respect in my eyes. 
Number three is another name that we've talked about on here, Elijah Riley, who's competing for the nickel in the slot cornerback position. He played safety last year. The Steelers moved him down to nickel. Grady Brown told me that he knows that he could play NFL football, that he has those capabilities in him and that he's seen flashes of it from time to time. I think during camp this year, he's put on a pretty collective showing of good performances. He he is a great blitzer off the edge, which I think is really good and necessary for the Steelers. And if he could continue to do that while also playing good coverage football, I don't see how he doesn't walk away as the winner in the nickel. Patrick Peterson, chances are, is going to start in that slot position. I don't think he's been named as one of the possibilities, but I know that he's probably the favorite. And I've heard from others that he is likely already named the starter in that position with the other two on the outside, those two being Levi Wallace and Joey Porter Jr. Elijah Riley could be that backup who comes in here to rush the quarterback, be physical, be a playmaker, kind of level the blow and add a little bit of explosiveness, a younger body. He's been impressive. He's got to continue to impress. This competition is nowhere near over. And Chandon Sullivan probably came in here with a pretty significant lead that Riley has to catch. But right now, I'd say he's the one that stands out the most. And if it continues to look good for him, I think he sticks on the roster and plays another season in Pittsburgh, this one with an actual chance to make some plays. We're going to stick in the defensive backfield with Luke Barku, who comes from the XFL. He's only 24 years old, which is already a good mark for him to be that young and have a second chance at the NFL. He He's making plays, and he's very open about the plays. He's got a pick six during minicamp. He finished the day, he told me, with four pass deflections, which is very impressive. And he continues to make plays. I talked to him and he said that all he has left to do is to continue to look comfortable. If he could continue to look like he knows what he's doing out there and that he fits in the defense, he believes he has a shot to make this roster. He's got to compete with James Pierre and Corey Trice. It's going to be tough for him to make this roster because the Steelers like James Pierre. I think Corey Trice isn't a lock, but if you're a seventh round pick who is already being tagged as an avatar corner from Mike Tomlin, chances are, you have a bit of an upper hand in that race. If Barku's going to make this team, he's got to beat out Pierre. And I think that he's got an opportunity. He's got to keep making plays. But if he makes those plays, and I think he's made more than anybody else on the field in the cornerback room to this point, then it's hard to keep him off the field, especially with how young he is, especially how inexperienced he is and how much room he still has left to grow. I think the Steelers are going to latch on to that. I think he's a candidate to sneak his way into that final cornerback spot. But again, he's got to continue to impress at training camp. We got three more, and we'll start with Keanu Neal, a guy who came in here and many people expected him to to replace Terrell Edmonds. I think he's going to do so and do even more. I look at this guy first off. The first time I ever saw Keanu Neal, I was a little bit terrified. I think he's a good person. Every time I've talked to him, I've walked away and felt, man, this guy, he smiles a lot. He's a good dude. Seems very nice. But if I didn't know him and he was walking down the street, he is ginormous. He is terrifying looking. He's got that haircut that's just like, it's like almost a flat top, but it just goes straight down. A little normal military cut, I would say. Scary human being. Just you look at him and you'd say, that guy would mess me up and he'd probably mess anybody up on a football field. And the Steelers are trying to utilize that to their advantage. He's got experience playing safety. He's got experience playing inside linebacker. Right now, he's playing both for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's been very open about the fact that he's been playing both positions for the Steelers. I think he's going to be a Terrell Edmonds, but even better. Able to cover and play safety, work with DeMonte KZ and Minka Fitzpatrick, but at the same time, move into the box, really be able to cover tight ends, really be able to be physical there for those guys on passing downs. I could see him as the dime backer. I just think he fits this defense so perfectly and he's willing to do things. And I'm not saying that Terrell Edmonds wasn't willing to do anything, but I think that he's willing to do anything that this team asks and believes that he could be that inside linebacker safety combo that a lot of NFL teams wish they had but haven't been able to make work. The Steelers might have somebody who might make it work. Keanu Neal looks good. He's playing a lot. He's very excited to be here. He said it was a no-brainer to sign with the Steelers, and I got to say, I think it was a no-brainer for them to sign him as well. He fits a lot of what they're looking for. 
He's been impressive. And the fact that he's so open to being a dynamic piece for this defense should really excite some people. I think the Keanu Neal chat's got to pick up because I think this guy's going to be a playmaker and people are going to be very excited to see him. We'll finish this off with two rookies. Nick Herbig is the first one. The outside linebacker has made plays so much so that I came on here and said at one point he got so riled up that Mike Tomlin came out and said, hey, get everybody off the field and or get all the, the defensive linemen off the field. And I talked to him about that. He said, yeah, man, I might have made a little mistake here and we got in trouble for it. I was like, yeah, but in the grand th- grand scheme of things, when you're going that hard in the moment, it's good to have a little bit of extra juice. If you're a rookie and you're making plays and you're getting trouble because you're getting you're going too hard, I don't think that's a bad thing. Nick Herbig has been impressive the entire OTAs and minicamp. He has not shied away from anybody. Broderick Jones, Dan Moore, Chooks for you name it, he's going up against them. He's feeling really good about it. Alex Highsmith told me that this kid brings a lot of juice and that he's very excited to see his development. I don't think that he plays a whole ton of snaps early, but I think in training camp, he's going to get some opportunities to work with Marcus Golden and even work into the rotation with Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt. And I think at that moment, we're going to see just how good this kid could be. People are worried about his arm length and that he's smaller or has smaller arms for an outside linebacker. Obviously, that's something to be concerned with. But in a competition period where you are only using your hands and your footwork and you're still beating guys, it's a good start for a guy who people are worried about his arm length and his ability to use his hands and his arms. If he's impressing now, I think at training camp, he's going to be even more impressive. And Nick Herbig is definitely a name to watch. And as a fourth round rookie, you got to be a little bit excited about what this guy could bring to the table. And then we'll finish it off with the star of minicamp, the guy who some have said turn heads. I think he's looked pretty impressive. I don't know if he's turning heads, but I think he's looked pretty impressive I think he has been the highlight of minicamp, and that is tight end Darnell Washington, the massive human being who just, if you saw Darnell Washington in person, you'd just be impressed no matter what he could do on a football field. You'd look at him and say, yep, nope, he looks he looks scary. He looks like he's a physical freak, and he's ginormous. So he's probably good at football. But then you watch him play, and you realize quickly, this guy is very good at football. He makes blocking sleds look like small children. It's ridiculous. I've never seen somebody walk in and naturally block a sled like he has. I remember guys, and I was talking to people the other day. I remember names like Eliza Mack coming in here at one point in my career and and going up against a blocking uh, sled, hitting it and literally not making it move at all. And then hitting it again and it going straight up in the air, which is not what you're looking for at all. Darnell Washington moves this thing like he's just walking. Like it's no big deal. Like somebody says, hey, can you move this over here? And for me, it'd be like picking up a water bottle and moving it over. For him, it's the same thing. I've never seen a rookie hit a sled as successful as Darnell Washington hits some blocking sleds. So his blocking capability should be just as good as we expected it to be, which is going to be scary good. Scary good. But now he's got a full route tree, and he's opened up about how he feels like a full wide receiver or a full receiving tight end, excuse me, in this offense, and he feels like this is a good opportunity. He's still stiff in those routes, but I think we expected that. He's never been a fluent route runner. That's why Georgia didn't really utilize him as one. He's more like that big physical body. But when he does get his hands on the football, he can make plays. And at 6'7", well, chances are you could go up over guys and you don't really have to be wide open to make some catches. I think Darnell Washington's early ceiling is, or early floor, excuse me, is a great red zone threat who could make some plays and certainly help in the running game. But he's impressed. He's looked very good at minicamp. I think this is the beginning. And I think once those pads come on in training camp, Everything changes. Everything. You could see just how physical this guy is, just how dynamic he is. And we'll see for the first time if he's able to turn those acrobatic or those contested catches into real life catches with pads on, with physical play. And I expect him to. I expect him to look good at training camp. He's looked real good at minicamp. And the Steelers should be very excited about what they got in this rookie tight end.